How are you doing? Welcome to live stream number 128. It is 8 p.m. It is February 15th, 2018. My name is Lars Christensen, and thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join today's live stream. Today's topic is CAM. So if you're not interested in CAM, just, just relax a little. Uh, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna, the, today's topic, I'm trying to I'm gonna say, uh, everything I know about form, tabs, thread milling. So it's all about cutting threats uh, today. Um, I've got this question from a few people who kind of like, some people trying to get into it, some people trying to use Fusion for thread milling. So I thought that that's what we are going to, uh, to talk about uh, today. And I'll share with you kind of like my experiences, uh, kind of like my rules for whatever they're worth, just my rules, that doesn't mean much. Uh, so, yes, let's talk about uh, threats. So we're going to talk about tabs inside of, uh, of Fusion 360. I'm going to show you a couple of, of tips and tricks. Uh, and then in the end, we're going to talk about thread millings. Thread milling, what is a way to actually mill uh, the thread in. Now, I wanted to go really back just to kind of like, just because I know some people, this is, is, is fairly new. Normally, when we're talking about tabs, we're talking about um, I have a couple here in my hand. A couple of different types that I normally, I don't know if it actually shows up very well on the screen. Probably can't focus in on it. Two tabs that I normally use. I, I can do better than this. Hang on. I can do better. Uh, two tabs that I always had in my toolbox for cutting steel uh, that I recommend. And this website here, it's called OSG. I'm not affiliated with these guys. I don't know any of them. Um, but this was the brand that I used to uh, used to use for whatever it's worth. <laughs> OSGtool.com. I left the link down in the description area. If you go in and you look here, you can click. Well, let me just go back. Sometimes I just click too fast. Down here you have a couple of different uh, menus. So um, click on the tabs, and there the two I want to talk about first are Spiral Flute, and there's one called Spiral Points. Um, so spiral point, um, again, I'm not quite sure how it shows up on my screen here, if I can zoom in on it. Um, it may be better just to actually look at the, at the image here. Um, spiral point tabs are absolutely, um, awesome, uh, when it comes to tabbing holes where the hole is all the way through. And this is very important to know. So with spiral points, the, when you're cutting with the tab, um, the chips are pushed forward into the hole. So these are not good if you're doing a blind hole uh, because all the chips are kind of like pushed down. Where spiral flute uh, go, the, the chips will go upwards. They will go out of the hole, what is absolutely awesome. Uh, when you are doing um, you're doing blind holes, now you get the thread up, and, and the thread um, the thread is very much. So I got that one here, um, the, so it has like a flat bottom, where the other one has a has a tip on it. So one pushes the chip. This the spiral point pushes the chips downwards, so the hole's got to be through, uh, but the other one pushes it up uh, through uh, the back of the hole. Of course, you can also use that on blind holes. But the problem is that the chips that comes out of the spiral, they're very much like um, like lathe chips many times. Is they're long and stringy. So if you had like a very deep hole, that chip could actually become a little bit of a problem when it comes up with the holes. So that's why I've always recommended to have both types in, in your, your toolbox. Um, now, before we start talking about CAM and, and, and how Fusion handles and things like that, I also wanted to bring up something else. Uh, it's called a form tab. Um, and if I go back on OSG's website, and again, I'm not a familiar, uh, affiliated with OSG. Uh, that was just the, one of the brands that I used a lot. There's something called forming. Um, form tabs actually don't make a chip. Um, they actually go in and form the steel to have the thread. So they actually pushes the steel around. So there's no chips created. 
uh, what of course is uh, is awesome. Now there's a couple of things you should know about uh, the forming tab. One thing about the forming tab, I used to use form tabs a lot for small holes because you, if you have a tab in small holes, you have a tendency to snap tabs, right? You probably tried that. Um, I would use it both in stainless, uh, what is very hard, and I would use it in uh, more gummy materials like copper, uh, uh, even like aluminum. There are a couple of things you need to know about form tabs. So they're great because they don't create a chip. It literally, it literally forms the frets by pushing into it um, and forming the frets around the tab. You use a different size drill than a normal, a normal cutting tab, like the two first ones I'm talking about. So that's one thing you need to, to be aware of, that you cannot use the stand. You can't just look at your drill chart and be like, okay, uh, you know, I'm doing a quarter 20 um, form and just use the 0.201 drill uh, that you need for that. You need a different size drill. So you gotta look at specifically for forming. The other thing you need to know about forming is that the thread is not 100% perfect. It actually ends up having a little, if you looked at it under a microscope or a loop, you'll actually see there's a little bit of a um, dent in the thread. It's not a perfect sharp corner. It has like a little bend in it. What I had some issues with one time on some military parts where I actually had to go back and use uh, regular tabs because the form tabs didn't fall to spec. So that's just kind of like what you, you need to know about. Now, then also while we're in here, so that's kind of like my, you know, the spiral flute, chips goes out of the hole, so that at the top, so this is for blind hole, spiral point, point all the way through the part, it pushes chips downwards, the forming tabs can be a great alternative, um, especially if you're doing like stainless steel or gummy materials. Um, the straight flute here, if you're just wondering, is more for like if you if you're using. Um, I've used those like more for hand if you just are, are doing them by by hand. Now that's what I kind of like wanted to talk about when it comes to to uh, to tabs. Um, so I want to make sure I got that out of the way. Now I found this great website and I have the link down in the description area. Everything you wanted to know about tabs, but I was afraid to ask. What a great title. I should actually have borrowed that one for, <laughs> for this live stream. There's a lot of different, um, a lot of different things in here that, uh, that you should know about. We're going to come back to this H value in just a, uh, a second. Now, Another thing I wanted to add um, when it comes to, to actually using these different tabs, um, you should look at your machine to see if you have what is called rigid tapping on it. And honestly, I have only worked on a machine that luckily had rigid tapping. What rigid, rigid tapping means is that the, that the spindle is totally in sync with the Z axis, what means that um, you can you can spin the tab in, stop the spindle down with the tab down the hole, and the spindle is accurate enough till it can reverse out again. Uh, on a lot of older machines, uh, you don't have rigid tapping. You actually have to get like a tapping head in it. Um, I have never used a tapping head myself. I've always been able to do it right in the machine. If your machine have rigid tapping, I think on a Fanuc, it's an M29. Uh, we'll turn rigid tapping on. You should definitely look into that if you have a CNC machine, if you have rigid tapping. Uh, normally when you're tapping a standard thread, it's a D84 is, uh, is the tapping cycle, uh, the can cycle for, uh, for the tap. Okay, so that was a lot of talking. Um, I just felt like that that was important. Now both these websites, uh, the everything you want to know about tabs and the OSG, I put them down in, in the description area. So let's talk a little bit about best practices inside of Fusion. And I, I don't have all the answers, um, I, I have to admit. Um, but um, I, like, I like to wish, I wish I had all the answers, but I don't. I'm offline. Am I offline? YouTube says that I'm offline. Uh oh.
I'm offline. Well, that sucks. Oh, I'm not offline. <laughs> okay. But hey, if you can see me, um, that's okay. Okay. YouTube is just saying that I'm, I'm offline. I'm just going to. I'm just gonna keep going then. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, sitting here scratching my head. Um, so let's go inside of uh, Fusion here. So, I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to do this in uh, in Intis just to keep my my brain uh, somewhat working here. So let's let's model something up quick here. Uh, start a new sketch. I'm gonna hit S key to get my center rectangle. I'm just gonna do a block here that is three by three inches. Extrude it up here. And let's make it uh, two inches thick. So we just we just have a block uh, right here. Uh, so if we have to, um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the thread and the hold command in here, uh, and some of what I prefer to do. And again, I'm not always right, so you know, make up your own opinion. Um, but if I create a sketch on top of this hole here. And I hit C for circle, and I'll sketch out a 0.25 diameter hole. So that's what we call a quarter inch in English. And I do a Q for press pull, and um, I'll drag it all the way down. Let's make it, well, there's a rule of thumb when it comes to tabs that um, one and a half time the diameter, one and a half time the diameter is generally best practice for uh, full thread. That's at least what I have, have normally normally used for maximum maximum thread. Um, so I think it is. All right, now I'm not 100% sure. I'm doubting myself. Uh, so if we make this one uh, uh, 0.75 deep, and just because we can't see anything, let me go in here and do a section analysis and just uh, cut halfway through so we can see what the heck we're doing here. So here we have uh, this hole. Now, uh, that is 0.25, so a quarter inch. If I go in here and I click on the threading command on the create, and I select uh, this thread here, you will see that Fusion is smart enough to know that the size of this, uh, 0.25, uh, you can also, of course, make the thread modeled or have it here. You will see that it is pixelated. Uh, it's just an image. It's a bitmap that it throws on it. Uh, you can, in Fusion, you can actually model it, what I prefer to normally to do if I got to show the thread. Um, so it already knows that it's a quarter 20. And we have talked about this before in the live stream. This comes out of the CNC handbook. Um, one thing we maybe just should touch quickly on is there is different classes in here. Uh, 1B, 2B, and 3B. Uh, 1B is the uh, loosest tolerance tab size, where 3B is what you normally would use as a machinist uh, for your, your accuracy, the highest uh, accuracy in here. So let me just hit uh, OK to this. Um, so here we have a, the B3 tab, uh, right here. Now, there's a couple of things. Well, so while I'm at this B3 uh, thread type, uh, I should maybe also say that when you're buying your tabs, uh, you will see that there is a H value on your tabs. And the H value goes probably from like H1 to H8, I think. Um, the idea is that H0 would be the minimum of the, the fret gauge that should go. So series like zero, zero tolerance. Um, and then it jumps with, I think, a half a thou as it goes up. So an H2 would be one thousandths bigger than um, the minimum a, a go gauge would go into a hole. I have known that this one here is a H6. So that means that it will be 3,000 bigger than the minimum. Uh, I think this other one I have right here is an H7. I've always ordered H6s as, as my standard. So I just wanted to throw that in there if, if that, hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. Now, but there's a couple of things that comes into mind when I look at this here. 
Um, one of them is that, first of all, we don't have a drill point, right? Like if we are drilling and tapping this, we would normally have a, a, a drill point on it. In case you didn't know, um, you can actually use this hole command to place a drill point in, in your holes and actually also a chamfer on the holes. Now this one works with a point. So you could use a circle. Let me just turn the analysis off here in a second. You could use um, a circle, but you could also use a, uh, a point. So if it's not a new sketch on this face here, same face, uh, you could place a point. I'm just gonna place the point out in the way and use my vertical relationship from here to the origin. So then same line, D for dimension, and place this one here, okay? Now with this point created, I can go and select the whole command. And some people have asked me why I never use this one. Um, if I click on this, it gives you some different options in here. So there's a simple hole. What will, we'll do our depth, so it was 0.75. Our diameter was 0.25 uh, right here. And then you can set the, the tip angle, what on a normal drill here is 118, 18 degrees. So if I, I click on this here, and we do the section analysis again, turn that back on, you will now see uh, that you get the drill point uh, in there, but it's of course a little bit better. Uh, you would normally drill a little bit deeper, right? Than, uh, than your, your thread needs to, to be. You could also, if we go back in and edit that uh, feature, you could also do adding a countersink on it, and now you could add some kind of a, a countersink uh, to it here, uh, that of course will add a little bit of a countersink uh, on, on the top of it here, what when we then insert our thread, uh, select the same one here, it will be a little bit more correct. Now that chamfer actually comes from wherever this is, so uh, it looks a little, a little big uh, as it is here. But if I turn the section analysis off, that looks more correct uh, as you will you will create this. So that has to, a little bit to do uh, with with the analysis tool in here. However, <laughs> there's always a however. When I normally use uh, threads uh, for, for, for cam, for tapping, uh, and do, um, do the, uh, the holes for tapping, I actually don't put the thread in. And I actually make it the diameter of the tab drill. Because in my mind, when I'm out of the CNC machine or I'm picking things, it's easier for me to see when I simulate if I have the wrong drill, if I go to the smallest hole uh, that, that I have. So what I would do, uh, and I think this is important, is I would actually, and, but I'm not saying it's the right way, but what I would do was I would create a sketch, <clears throat> and we're talking about a quarter 20, hit C for circle, I would sketch a 0 0.2, 0 0.201 circle, because that's the drill size uh, that, I, that I need. And that also, we'll talk about fret milling in a couple of minutes. That also uh, kind of like falls into place with that. Uh, this is what I would do uh, from the standpoint of programming. it. Um, so then I would do just a Q and go minus 0.75. So if I do the section analysis again, uh, you will see that uh, this is probably the, what we're actually going to end up with in our model. So if you just hired me to design a part, but it had nothing to do with manufacturing, this would be prettier. Um, again, my drill point would go a little bit deeper. And oh, I should show that. So if I go back into this one here, um, I'll rewind, I should show these things. Uh, I would probably go a little bit deeper, right? You wouldn't go full depth of fret. So on this arm, we might go another 50 thousands on the drill, but be aware of that the thread still goes deep because in the, in the threading command, right click edit feature, there's a checkbox if you want full length. When you select full length, it's just gonna do it on the entire face, uh, what you have in here. If you uncheck that, we could now make the full length the X is 75. 
this would be this would probably be the the right right way to, to have this hole but for cam i would do this and i wanted to show you why i will do this so transaction analysis off so when we go into cam and we create a setup we would always do select the z-axis that's fine um then we will be drilling for that tab we will be drilling a um well we'll be spotting first but then we would be drilling with a um 0 0.201 drill right i'm missing a thousand so a little bit on the size but the reason I would do this is that when I'm selecting that geometry, that's the size of my drill. Selecting over here is a little bit harder, right? Because for drilling here, which diameter are you now going? So you got to go in here and try to, you could select this one up here. Now, so, so that's why I, that, that's the first reason I'm doing this. Second is when you go over to the Heights tab, and I've done a live stream uh, on the, the height it's had before but down at the bottom uh, the drill right now drill to the bottom of the hole but we can actually have that drill tip on 118 added to it and if i made the hole 750 like i did we could add you know another 50 thousands to the depth right here for this drill other quick thing for the drill be aware of on the cycle tab you can choose the type of drilling you want. So this is just a standard drilling down and out. I always use chip breaking, so G73. That would be my default uh, for, for drilling. That's what I normally, unless I was doing high production part, uh, but chip breaking would be my favorite. Because now when I go to simulate this, turn the stock on. Uh, now I'm drilling the same hole See that it's chip breaking. Yeah, I'm drilling the same hole as I modeled into into the part here instead of instead of whatever these were uh, the quarter ends here. Um, so that is my my main reason for always doing this. And again, it's just <clears throat> what to me somewhat makes sense. Now, if we're gonna do the tab uh, in here, we could either we could just stop. There's still a drilling operation. Um, so let's go in and select. Now it's not going to be a drill. It's going to be a uh, a tab. And I don't even know in the tutorial library. There's no tab. That's typical. Uh, there is tabs um, right here. So you can select ANSI tabs or ISO tab. Uh, so we could go in here. I'm going to show you in a second how you can make your own. Uh, and we could find the quarter 20 uh, tab that I would use for this. Uh, in here quarter 20 means uh, for you um, metric people 20 stands for 20 threats per inch so a quarter 20 uh, it's a it's a quarter diameter so 0.25 and over one inch there will be 20 threats on it if I click on that select that um, and hit OK of course I'm going to select where I'm going to drill that one I'm going to take the same hole be aware of when you go over to the cycle here, it, it has tapping down here and you can select uh, the tapping. And that will give you the G84 uh, uh, for, for drilling that out. Check on the rigid tapping as I talked about earlier. So I said that, now I wanna talk just a few minutes uh, about thread milling because I got a few questions uh, about that. Now thread milling, I gotta tell you a little bit of a, a funny story just to, to show, you know, Talking about the things you didn't dare to ask for when it comes to, to frets. So back at Ridlam, we bought a brand new Matsura, top of the end machine. 11 pallet pool, awesome machine, accurate as crazy. And I decided, we're doing a lot of production on this machine. I decided that we were going to start thread milling on this machine. I'm like, no more this whole tapping because I'd heard the rumors about that when you, even if you have rigid tapping, that it really puts a lot of stress on your spindle to do the whole tapping in and stop and then tapping out again. So I decided that on this machine, we're only gonna thread mill, meaning that you're actually machining the thread. The great thing about thread milling is that you can now make that thread 
so smooth. Like when you check your gauge, it's like beautiful, right? The, the thread is, is perfect, it's, it's smooth, it's, it's great. What I didn't realize until I actually started messing with it is that thread milling is a very slow process. The reason for that is that you normally get a lot of deflection on the cutter, which means you gotta rerun. I used to, if I had to fret mill, at least rerun the same tool path three times. So from a cycle time standpoint, thread milling is not uh, always great. But let me show you how uh, to work with it inside uh, of Fusion. So um, let's go back and flip this part over. Um, and let's talk about, so fret milling for small holes are not really uh, that ideal. Um, it, you know, smaller colors can make it a little bit harder. Uh, I did some bigger holes, like a one inch hole, for example. So draw a one inch hole here and, uh, and then machine or cut that down uh, a size. So like a, a much bigger hole compared to the smaller, um, the smaller ones. Now, now I'm hearing that I'm offline. I'm cutting off. Okay, I'm gonna keep on going and just throw the recording up. I'm almost wrapping up here. If this is not good, then I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Um, so um, with thread milling, we are actually going to drive this uh, with with the cutter. And uh, one of the things that is important is that the cutter is going to be cutting this size. So when I go into CAM, um, let me create a new setup. Here on the, on the top here. So here you would first, there's a big hole, so I would definitely first drill it out, right? So let's just select uh, some kind of a drill. Maybe select the same size drill. That would probably maybe be okay, whatever. So we drill the hole, uh, but then you have to make the hole bigger uh, and there you will come in with an end mill. So maybe going in, I would probably use something like a, um, a circular, a circular uh, tool. But I'm sorry if I'm falling out. Um, I'm just gonna keep going because this is recorded and then I'll make sure we get the better recording up on the screen. So I'm selecting circular mill and probably just selecting a half inch end mill right here um, to machine that, di oops, machine that diameter. Oops, I just canceled out of it. So I was like a circular tool path, half inch end mill and, uh, and select this uh, diameter. But see, this is where my rule, as I said before, about drilling uh, to the smallest diameter, because I'm gonna run into the same problem here when you're thread milling that I actually blasted a hole down that is one inch, but this is gonna be an internal hole, so one inch is actually my, my OD, not my ID for, uh, for the tab. So this can be very dangerous to do this. Now, just to show you, you can get around it, if I go in and edit it, I could go in to uh, and say stock to leave in here, and you can do math in here. So I know if I do a bracket, it's a one inch hole uh, minus what the drill for one inch 12 tap would be, what is point, uh, 0.922, and I could divide that by two. So you can do math in here, and now it would be like I had drilled a 0.922 uh, diameter, diameter hole. But I would not suggest doing this. Uh, what I would actually do was I would make sure in my model environment that this hole here, again, measures what the drill or the minimum size uh, hole is, right? So that's just... Again, just my experience, kind of like uh, helping yourself a little bit by going with the smallest, uh, smallest diameter. So let me turn the stock to leave off. Uh, so now we come to the thread milling. And the thread milling, uh, if you go to the 2D drop down, you will see that thread milling, oops, I clicked on a little quick. 
uh, you'll see the threat milling is right here. Now let's talk a little bit about threat milling uh, and the cutters. So first of all, there is no, as far as I know, any cutters in here, but you can create your own. So if you click up here on the, you can create a new mill tool. And if you click over here, you will actually see if you go down towards the bottom that there is a thread mill uh, all the way down here. Uh, so if I click on thread mill, we get a nice picture of, a, uh, of the thread mill here. Now on a, a thread mill, the thread mill is normally a lot smaller than the hole you're gonna cut. Uh, so in this case here, it might be something like 0.625 in diameter. Um, and, uh, and then you will have a thread pitch uh, between the threads. Now, I said before, so this is a one inch by 12. So that means that there will be 12 threads over one inch. Again, for you metric people, I'm sorry that I'm kind of skipping over in this inch environment, but that would be 0 .8, 0 .0822 uh, for, for this. Now you can buy two types, a little hard to see in the image here, but you can buy two types of thread mills. You can either buy one that only has one thread on it, the cutter, or you can buy some that had multiple. I'm just leaving it at one thread right now so we can take a look at this. Hit OK, select this thread mill, and you can kind of see in the shadow, it just has one tooth on it. The nice thing about the one tooth thread mill is that you can actually, um, you can machine uh, different size threads with the same type of cutter. So it's not tied to one specific size thread. So with the thread mill, uh, we're gonna select what we're gonna do. And here we're selecting the inside, um, the smaller size, right, of the cutter. Um, now, if you're looking at the, at the thing here, you can see that it spirals. Thread mills always go from the bottom and up. That's a little bit freakish if you have never fret milled before. So you need to know that. It starts at the bottom and it works its way up. Uh, for uh, a couple of reasons. It actually helps with uh, deflection, but also uh, the, the chips uh, that you're cutting, when you're cutting this thread, falls down at the bottom if, it's a, it's a, if there's a bottom on the hole. So if you start it from the top, by the time you got down to the bottom, your cutter will hit all those chips. So it actually makes sense to start from the, from the bottom moving up. And lastly, it lets us climb cut also. That was a lot. You will see that it pulls in the thread pitch from, um, from the tool. So my thread pitch here is 0 0.0822 because 12 threads per inch. And then you will see that there's something here called pitch diameter because the cutter right now, if I just hit okay right now and simulate this, turn the stock on and go to that thread. Um, you'll see here's our hole from the end mill. When I thread mill right now, let's speed it up here. You really don't get any thread because the cutter is just driving the minimum diameter. So now I have to put in a pitch offset what would be uh, what we had before, what I think is like 32 thousandths or something like that. That would be the, um, the one. So you got to do it somewhere, <laughs> the calculation somewhere. Right by two. Now, when we simulate it, you should see that we now get... Um, now we get an excellent thread in there uh, that looks more like what, what we want. So I guess what to take away from this is I always model my holes for threading at the smallest diameter, so my tab drill size, because that keeps me on the safe side. And when it comes to circular mill or thread milling, when you size the hole, you can use that diameter because that is the, the smallest diameter. But then in the fret mill, you have to go and make that, uh, that offset right there, whatever. And it's shown really, Mike Matera does these pop-up uh, things. Mike did an awesome job on this one. It explains it right here, that you have to 
to offset uh, that cutter out because the, the um, fret mill will just run uh, the inside of the hole. I'm sorry for you guys who uh, there was some breakup. It, weird on, on my end, it says I'm offline, but people are saying that I am online. This is being recorded. I will check on it and make sure that we get the best recording up tomorrow. So just to wrap everything up here on a Thursday evening about all I know about threads. Uh, so again, if you missed the beginning, go back and, and check it out. But I have a couple of tabs that I recommend you have in your toolbox. They do different things. One pushes the chips down, one pushes the chips back out of the hole. Uh, so depending on if you have a blind or, or not a blind hole. Um, also consider the form tab. If you have gooey materials or hard small holes, tapped holes like stainless steel. And then finally the thread milling uh, is really good uh, in there. Now, when I use a thread mill, I actually bought the, the one that has more teeth on it, not just a single tooth, but I had multiple teeth on it. And again, I, can, I could just go into the cutter in here in Fusion. If we go in and find that thread mill we created, edit it. And we could go in here and put, you know, eight teeth on it or something. So it has some more teeth on it. Uh, all that will do, we're still going to run the same tool path, but it just does a little bit better, you know, more teeth cleaning it up. But still, my experience, and, and you guys who have done more of this than me, my experience is um, that um, you always have to run, when you fret mill a hole, you normally always have to rerun the hole a few times. And it's actually an option also in here, I should say that too. If you go to the passes tab, you will see in here, you can add multiple passes and even repeat passes also um, if, you, uh, if, you want, if you want that. All right, guys, I hope this was useful. A couple of people have asked me talking about tabs. I hope this was not a waste of your time. You let me know. Thumbs up if it's good, thumbs down if it's bad. I would like to get your feedback. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much. Uh, for taking the time to watch it. Uh, I will end the broadcast right here. And then I'm going to jump into the people in the live stream and uh, just say uh, hi to everybody in there. So until the next time, have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, guys.